What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Panthers Nation Network. And this is a special one, you guys. It's a first for our podcast network. It's a first for Panthers Nation as a page. We've got a real life, in the flesh, Carolina Panthers football player joining us. He is a just signed a one-year deal as a safety with the Carolina Panthers, Justin Burris. Justin, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First off, I mean, everyone who knows, we saw you recently got engaged. I think it was about almost a year ago now, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, to your longtime girlfriend who you met at NC State. No, we actually, or, well, we met in middle school. Middle school? Um, yeah, we, we met uh, both from Raleigh. Uh, we've been to the same middle school, high school, college. Uh, we started dating in college, but you know, we were friends, um, mostly mostly high school. We we uh, we started becoming friends. We we're friends. So start, starting off, not even talking about football, talk a little bit about that. That's got to be something really special. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, that's my best friend. You know, we obviously have a lot in common coming from Raleigh, um, being Wolfpack fans um, and now living in Charlotte. You know, we have all our family right here, which is just just been amazing. And, you know, to be with the Panthers for three years has been has been great for us um, having our family right here just being able to come and just hang out with us at any time and be able to, you know, go home the same day, um, not have to travel so far and things like that. So it's been, a, it's been amazing for us. Talk a little bit about it. You see, so you went to high school at Broughton, mm-hmm. obviously went to NC state, live, grew up in Raleigh. You were born in Roanoke, but so kept a little bit close, but talk a little bit about, you know, after spending time on the Browns, like I think a, a week on the Raiders yeah. and then some time on the jets, what it meant to get the offer from the Panthers back in, I think it was beginning of 2020. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, you know, dream come true, homecoming, um, nothing against those other, other uh, programs. Um, I love my time with the Jets. I love my time with the Browns, um, great organizations, um, learned a lot from them, but just to come back home was amazing. Um, I've been a Carolina Panthers fan, um, secretly always, you know, watching, seeing how they, how they did. Um, but yeah, just, just to be able to come back home, play in front of my, my family, um, them not having to go through uh, just just how hard it is to you know be able to travel um, and get back to work on a Monday um, for them to just be able to come and, and be able to share in this enjoyment with me and be here um, every game has, has been great. So for you coming in 2020, how hard was that transition coming into a coming to a new team and not really having a true off season? Yeah, that was that was tough. Um, but that's just the leadership of, of the group uh, we have. Um, you know, like I said, nobody really knew each other. Um, nobody, you know, we were all coming in. You know, we didn't even meet each other when we first got here. It was all through, um, you know, through through the through the computer. Um, so we had to we had to bond quickly, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, once we got to camp, once we you know got around each other, spent a lot of time together trying to get to know each other, um, trying to make sure our communication was great. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a two year process of that. Um, and we're still growing, we're still learning, we're still learning each other, but this is a very tight group. Um, this entire team man, it's a very, very tight group. So it's been, it's been great. Justin, I've got some questions for our fans that, uh, showed up on our page. And one of them is this every April we have the draft 230 plus players get drafted and stuff. Some don't make rosters. Some do. Um, and one of the questions was at what point in your career, um, in the NFL, was there a moment, whether it was training camp or preseason or a game where you were like, okay, I belong where maybe there was some shaky confidence, but then all of a sudden I got this. Was there a moment? Um, I always had that confidence that I could play in the league, but I guess that moment where I knew for sure, um, I was, I was with the jets. I got drafted to the jets and I was kind of, I was the young corner. Darrell Reeves was there. We had a bunch of other older uh, corners that were there so I was you know I was I was there I was trying to work my way up but I was the young guy um, but a lot of the time I would get matched up on, on Brandon Marshall um, and that was yeah that was something that was like oh man this is this is one of the best receivers you know for a while um, mm-hmm. he's been in the league for a while and I'm, I'm the young guy coming in I think he was year 11 year 12 something you know he was up there he's established himself and um uh, him and Ryan Fitzpatrick, they were, you know, they had their connection going, but, um, I, you know, I made an interception, uh, over, over Brandon Marshall, uh, garden Brandon Marshall. And that was just kind of my welcome to the NFL moment. Um, you know, along with, you know, walking into the locker room and, and Darrell Reeves is sitting right there, you know, you, wow. you know, you grow up a corner and, and Darrell Reeves is sitting right there. You're like, wow. So, 
um, those are those are kind of like my welcome to the to the NFL moments, and it was that was you know those were amazing. You talk about Revis being there in the room with you. Do you is it funny to see on the other side now some of the guys you know like JC and Dante having that reaction to Gilmore walking through the room yes. when you're getting ready for practice? I mean, just like that's a guy that's that's made so many plays in the league. That's a that's a corner who was an NFL defense player of the year, and that's you know that's that's amazing in itself. That's that's um, that's something that's hard to do. Um, especially with the uh, volume of, of passes that he, you know, probably gets. And, you know, whereas a linebacker or a DN can, you know, get to the quarterback every every play. But just, to, you know, somebody like that who's made those plays, who's won that many times, who's won championships, uh, to come into our organization and the things he was able to implement and um, how he went about um, things was great for for uh, Dante and, and JC and, and our our young corners, um, and it was great for me. You know, I was a I was a safety. I was in year six, so I wasn't as young as them. But just to see somebody who's won a championship in this league, who's um, who who knows what it takes to get the job done, um, I wanted to you know sit back and take notes and and see how he went about his business. You were listed as a cornerback there in college, and you talked about it. You know, lining up against Brandon Marshall there, and lining up, you know, in that first game and throughout that. Talk about the switch from safety to cornerback, and when you kind of felt, or when that was kind of dawned on you that this was the position you were, you know, meant to be in. Um, I, I was always a, a a guy who knew the playbook. Um, you know, a lot of corners are um, very. You know, I got I got my man. That's that's it. I was always a guy who wanted to know more uh, about the playbook, who wanted to know where everybody's position was, what everybody did. Um, and just my transition from uh, being a guy who majority uh, matched up against bigger receivers. Um, you know, I didn't really go into the slot too much. I was more so matched up against bigger receivers, tight ends type things, even when I was a corner. Um, so that transition, um, being able to match up and be in the box and uh, be able to guard those tight ends that was kind of a transition that I wanted to further my career and um you know once that happened you know I kind of hit the ground running as soon you know it was a few practices here and there. I was like oh man this is a lot of communication this is a lot of you know I got to talk to this side talk to that side talk to my linebackers but once I picked that up um it was it was it was amazing I loved it I love being I love being the quarterback of the defense I love being back there talking um I love being back there you know making sure everybody knew what they had to do uh, and, you know, being somebody that they can rely on to, um, you know, be that safety of the defense. So just to harken back to your time in, uh, with, with the Jets, uh, you know, you, you haven't played with the future Hall of Famer and Darrell Revis and you're playing with a guy, one of the all-time greats of Brandon Marshall. What are some of the things that they did that you see in younger players that they, that they showed the potential of, you know, getting uh, possibly getting to that level or something that you learned that you possibly want to give the younger players? Uh, I got two um, for one for one for each. Um, I'll start with Revis. Uh, his is more football. And I would see him every day, man. He'd have his he had his playbook and he was just going through play after play. Go back, go back a play, see what happened. He would, you know, his he was so meticulous in his uh, in his preparation in trying to, you know, trying to figure out just just to get one one little edge on whatever receiver uh, he was checking. And, you know. I could see, obviously, you know, that, that year was that 2009, 2010, where he just, you know, he pretty much locked up every uh, number one receiver in, in the NFL. Um, and just just to see how meticulous he was, um, just leverage, uh, stance, eyes, uh, trying, trying to figure out, oh, if he came out and he, he grabbed his gloves, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a pass play. Um, if he came out, he just walked out the huddle without finishing the, finishing the rep or finishing uh, the quarterback's um, – quarterbacks play oh it's a run uh whether where he lined up uh where um if he lined up inside the numbers he was probably going out or it was going across from routes if he lined up outside the numbers we're coming inside things like things like that i've seen him um and it, it transitioned it translated over into practice where i would see him literally run a route for a receiver you know he'd be going against the scout team and you know they'd be running the dig, and he's breaking on the dig before they even ran because he's seen what number two is doing. He's seeing where the quarterback move is doing. That that level of detail was was amazing to see. And then the second one was Brandon Marshall was a, more so off the field, um, and just how he handled himself is because I've always had a business mindset, but I didn't know exactly where to take it when I was uh, 21, 22 years old coming into the league. 
and he kind of he would give me a book here tell me tell me to read this tell me to read that we'd have conversations because he was you know he was my locker man he, he, he was right beside me um when i when i was a rookie and just seeing that kind of a person that was looking past um his his nfl career where he wanted to go next and the things he was doing going to, he wanted to come to new york so he can go to new york and be on tv and uh what he's doing with um with the i am athlete podcast now it was amazing to see and that kind of got my head you know turning and trying to get you know get my gears turning on what i wanted to do after football and uh try to you know trying to turn that light on uh sooner than sooner than later so from another fan a lot of us are armchair quarterbacks um or you know what i'm getting at where it's yeah. sunday afternoon yelling at the tv why didn't the guy do this why didn't the guy do that and stuff like that um Fans really have no idea, do they, Justin, of just how much goes into game planning. And we talk about the playbook. I hear rookies talk about when they were handed the playbook for the first time. Yeah. They had no idea. Yeah. So we it's as fans, a lot. I mean, it, it just can you break it down exactly how intense it is for you guys in terms of we see 22 guys go out on the field, we think it's simplistic, run, throw, block, tackle. It, it's just a whole completely different level, isn't it? Well, yeah, it, I mean, we, it has to be, you know, we have to go in there with a mindset that we have to try to, you know, trick these cerebral guys like Tom Brady, like a Drew Brees, like Russell Wilson, these guys who are so smart and they can they can see what you're in. You know, if you're just standing around and, you, you know, you have to be able to to move and adjust and, and show different ways and you have to be on the same page. If I'm showing a blitz from opposite. I need I need the other guys I need the other guys on the other side of the field to know we're not blitzing this side we're blitzing that side but I'm just showing this side we're trying to we're trying to you know we're trying to mess with the quarterback we're trying to mess with receivers and we all have to be on the same page because if we're gonna if we're gonna show one way we all have to know and um, you know we can't just sit back in one coverage because they, you know these these quarterbacks are here for a reason they're making the big money for a reason because they can pick a defense apart so. We have to we have to come in with you know different you know man coverages different um, different blitz packages you know cover three cover four cover two we have to mix everything together um, combination coverages uh, based off of motions like we have to be able to do those things because if you if you don't these guys you know they'll march right down the field so it's it's a it's a tough uh, thing to do but you're here for a reason like you have to learn this playbook you have to get in the playbook you have to learn. And um, it has to, you know, it has to be like the back of your hand. Once, once you go into that game day, um, it can't be, oh, what, what do we got here? You know, what, what do we got? Like, what do we have on this one? No, we have to know. And we have to trust the person next to us knows. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because when you came into this organization back in 2020, getting that two-year deal, getting, you know, throwing into the starting spot, you said not knowing anybody you were playing with. And not only that, but having to go up against – Freshly in the in the division, Tom Brady and then Matt Ryan and Drew Brees, who were staples. And talk about you know the mindset you had, knowing what you were walking into and who you were going to have to be going up against. Well, I will say, you know, having a guy like Trey Boston in the, in the backfield who's going to talk no matter what, uh, you know, it, it makes it a little easier. I mean, just you know, having him back there with me um, and having having young guys like Jeremy Chin, having having Shaq Thompson, you know, all those guys that we had, um, you know, in just my secondary, we were so close. Um, even without, you know, even with having the COVID season, um, not being able to see each other, you know, we still, we would, uh, you know, get on FaceTime and, and talk to each other. Or, you know, once we, you know, once we got to camp, we would, you know, try to do little things to, you know, to bring um, that camaraderie together um, and bring, bring our group closer. Because that's one thing we have to do, like I said, is communication. Like, we have to be able to communicate. Like, if, you know, we have to be able to make sure that everybody knows their, you know, knows their job. They're on the, um, they're on the same page. And um, like we have to have that trust, and building that trust is is um, it's tough. It takes time. Um, it's just it can't it can't be overnight. You know, you have to you have to build that trust. You have to know that that person knows exactly what they're gonna do, and um, not just in practice. Like I need to know in the game. You know, when it's when it's live action, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be able to calm down, relax, be able to get your call out. So um, yeah, that's going along with that. You know. And we're we're not gonna you know sugarcoat it like it, it's not a thing. The defensive back group this year doubled in size. It looks yeah. it seems like, and there was different faces every each and every week. Talk a little bit about what it meant to get that one year deal to come back and know that okay you know you are gonna be in this and kind of what the one year deal means for your mindset when there's a couple other different guys you know Woods coming in. You don't really know what's going on with Gilmore right now. 
you know, having all this stuff going on, talk about what that one year deal means for your mentality going in this season. Well, for one, for me, it means I get to be back with my guys. That's 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 one thing. Um, get to be back in the Carolina Panthers uniform. Um, get to play for this coaching staff, uh, which I've you know really really come to appreciate. Um, they're they're great individuals. Uh, had a little bit of turnover, um, obviously now, especially with um, with our DB coach being one. Um, but you know, Coach Steve Wills coming in, um, great guy. Um, you know, Coach Jason Simmons was was a great guy. Uh, loved him. Um, but obviously moving forward with Wilkes, um, you know, he's, a, he's amazing. You know, he was my defensive coordinator in Cleveland. Have a, have a, have some familiarity with him. Um, yeah. He's, I didn't even think, uh, I forgot about that. That's yeah. completely right. I, com- yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Great, great teacher of, um, of the game and of, you know, life and, uh, being a great person. Um, so just having him come in, um, having that continuity, um, uh, with him kind of one, I wanted to, you know, obviously come back having coach rule coach snow um so yeah that i mean just just being able to be back uh with them and my teammates and you know even all the new guys coming i haven't I haven't met everybody yet but i know what coach rule um wants in players and i know who he brings in and uh he's not bringing in guys who you know don't work hard who don't hustle um who aren't all for the team so you know those guys coming in it, it's, it's not going to be any any different they, you know they're going to come in and um have those same values and, and work towards this goal of eventually winning a, winning a championship uh, sooner than later. Um, and then for me, for me personally, obviously one year deal um, hurt last year. Didn't, you know, didn't finish the way I wanted to got hurt in the third game of the season. Just wasn't, wasn't the same afterwards. So this is kind of a, a, a prove it deal for me, honestly. Um, you know, my, my value to this team, um, you know, I, I'm trying to prove that I'm still trying to prove that because, um, I think, I, I think of myself as a leader. I think of myself as kind of our communication guy, guy going to get everybody in the right direction, a guy that can do a lot of different things and, you know, be a plug and play, uh, type of guy. And I want to prove that to everybody else, um, especially after coming off of, uh, of an injury. So this is a, this is a big year for me, um, prove a deal, but you know, that's, that's why I'm here for it to compete. Um, that's, that's what I want to do. I wouldn't be in the NFL if I wasn't, if I wasn't a competitor. So just, just glad, just grateful for the opportunity. It's really all the, all the boys down to just real quick. You mentioned the week three game. Talk about just the mayhem of that game against the Texans and kind of what the vibe was in the locker room after that and what the message was spread across the team, you know, moving forward from that game. Cause there was a lot that right. happened in, in Houston. Right. I mean, Obviously, going in three and zero, we were we were happy. Um, three and zero, we didn't know the extent of everybody's injury at the time. Um, I want to say what three guys went down: C Mac, uh, J C, me. Um, I can't remember if J C went down that game or not. I, yeah, I think J C he... went down. I want to say he was either a two plays before me or two plays after me. I can't I can't remember. I think it was two plays after me he went down. Um, but obviously didn't know the extent of what was going on, but we were three and zero at the time. We were like, Hey man, next, next guy up. Uh, we'll be back soon. Um, we'll figure this thing out. We'll keep this thing rolling. And, um, obviously, you know, it's, it's a Thursday night game. It's, it's, it, you get, you get three days, uh, well, what's that? Yeah. Three days of rest. And then you got to go back and, and play another, it's, it's a gladiator sport. You know, it's, it's tough. Um, so it's little little things like that. It's just like, eh, well, you know, Thursday night, like, why would we do this? But you know, it's, it's the league. You got to deal with it. So, um, I wish you know, I wish it didn't happen. I wish we were on a roll, three and zero. I think we were really, um, really starting to pull things together as a team. And then obviously, you know, three people go down. But um, yeah, that's really that's really how how that went. So. so- I guess that's how I had had this question a while ago when you were talking about how difficult it is to come in and transition to the NFL game. I guess what quarterback for you, you know, kind of let you know, like kind of put you in awe. I know you, well, you know, that you're just an ultra competitive sport, so you don't really want to be fans of some of these guys. But what, but what quarterback for you just kind of like made you realize, like, oh, this is a different type of level of talent here. A different type of level of talent, man. I, you know, let me see. I have a different reasoning behind it. Um, I, I think my either my first, I think it was my second year in the league. Um, I went up against uh, Philip Rivers, and totally probably different than what you were trying to ask. But 
I grew up an NC State fan, and you know, Philip Rivers was, you know, the man at, at NC State. You know, four year starter, uh, broke every record. And I remember going to those games, and I fell in love with Carter Finley Stadium and the Wolfpack. Um, you know, not not to mention my mom went there, and I really didn't have a choice. By the way, but we, you know, we we, uh, you know, she would take me to those games, and um, just the atmosphere. The atmosphere of Carter Finley, um, those games uh, watching Philip Rivers and T.A. McClendon and you know all those guys uh, play ball, man, it was it was amazing. I remember going down. We were to the Gator Bowl. I was that was what 2002. I was like seven seven years old, maybe eight years old, and they played Notre Dame. And I, I remember watching that guy. I remember being there. I remember you know watching that bowl game. And I, I always said like I wanted to go to NC State, and I wanted to play in a bowl game like this. And um, so, you know, getting back to your question, uh, watching him for so long and, you know, him being in the league for as long as I can remember um, and then being able to see him in person and play against him, man, it was was a dream come true because, like, this was a guy that, I, you know, I was in elementary school watching NC State play, and I'm like, man, this is amazing. And then now I'm I'm here. I'm in the NFL now. I went to NC State. I You know, I made that dream a reality. And then now I'm in the NFL playing against a guy that I watched for, you know, from – very little um to play against so that was pretty much that that's to answer your question yeah so did seeing jacoby Brissett or going up against the J- jacoby myers did that give you the same kind of feeling yeah i mean those are my guys man that's a, that's a different type of feeling because i played with those guys and to see their hard work um see their hard work you know in in college and to see where they got to uh it's, it's great to see whenever i see a former nc state player whenever i see a guy that i played with um it's, I, you know, I love to see it because I seen how they worked hard. I see behind the scenes um, the things they were doing um, that a lot of people don't see. A lot of people didn't, you know, see how how hard those guys work. So I was I was very happy for them and see where they've gotten to this day. All right, this question just hit me because you're talking about Philip Rivers. Um, <laughs> okay, the man could talk some trash. We know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I love sounds of the game and the NFL films and all that. So question would be best trash talker. In the NFL, or even well, let's go Panthers. Is there one of the Panthers who really likes to talk it up? <laughs> the best trash talk on the Panthers. Let me see. Hmm, <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. I mean, there's a lot of guys that talk, man. It's, <laughs> I get. I, I mean, I guess from a, and it can be fun too. I mean, you know. What I'm yeah, saying. yeah, for sure, man. But I, I guess from a funny standpoint, um, the funniest guy on the team is Djack for sure. Yeah. But I, I guess mean, as far yeah. as like talking trash, yeah. I would say um, he's not with us no more. But 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 Haas, Hassan Reddick, he he talked a lot, man. He was he had that he had that New York New Jersey accent, and he, you know, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, like that accent coming out when he's mad, you know, it it, it was funny, but. Um, I say, I guess on the team now would probably be um, uh, Shaq, probably on on defense um, or uh, Chen, Chen. Chen will talk a little bit. Okay. Chen, um, as, as Chen got a little older, man, he he started to talk a little <laughs> bit. You know, he he started to flex his muscles. So, yeah, I, I'd say I say Chen. Got it. I'm is sorry. Some- you know, I'm sorry. I I just forgot. The the biggest trash talk is Kenny Rock. That's that's who the biggest trash talk is. All that's, right. that's who the biggest one. My fault. I, I, I forgot all about it. All right, all good. <laughs> that's the biggest. That's the biggest trash talk right there. He's from Pittsburgh. He gonna let you know he's from Pittsburgh. Come on, that's he's my a, guy, man. That's my steel guy. Mill, steel Town type. There you go. I got yeah. you. And so talk a little bit about you know the personalities of this team. You know some of them are very apparent, like D Jack. You can definitely <laughs> tell. There's some guys like DJ Moore who you don't even know if he says five words in a practice. Is there anyone whose personality would surprise the fans if they met him in person? Some, uh, some personalities that would surprise the fans. You know, maybe he's a bit more outspoken than you would see on camera or or something like that. Hmm. Uh, I would, I'm trying, I'm, I'm really, I'm, this is really trying to think. There's so many personalities. I'm trying to. It's got to be hard to keep track of them all. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's, it's a lot, man. I, So me and me and me and Brian Burns got this little thing. I, you know, he's he's young. He's a young guy to me. So me and him uh, kind of got this uh, R and B thing we got going. <laughs> I, you know, I'll play a song. I'll play a song. He'll play a song. Like, hey, who who's who's this artist? 
sing, sing this song. So, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a thing me and him got going back and forth because I, you know, he he 18 years old than me, but you know, he's uh, you know, he's obviously going to be a great player in this league. He is a great player in this league, but um, I try to I try to show him up that he you know he don't know anything about old school R and B. But yeah, that's 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 another one of my guys. He's a good guy. So we have a you know we have a very talented receiver room. I guess you know when you guys go one on one, who's the guy you battle with the most out of that receiver room? Uh man, I'd say I honestly I I'll give it more so to like Ian Thomas because I I'm, I'm more so guard uh guard a lot of the tight ends. Um, if I do if I do guard um any receivers, usually it's in the slot. So I'd say probably DJ Moore, somebody like that. Um. Those are those are probably the two because I you know I don't really go too much on the outside any outside receivers or anything like that but um yeah tight ends wise um Ian and uh and Ian and Tommy those are two those are two guys. Um, I'm sure we'll move on to uh, this upcoming season. Let me ask you one more question about the last two seasons. Um, obviously, haven't gone the way you probably wanted them to go in terms of the final records. Yeah. Um, and so with somebody like yourself and you've been in the league now and you've been with a couple teams and stuff, it, just as an individual, not as a team but as an individual. How do you stay positive? Uh, I know it can be tough. You know, you hear the fans, you hear, you know, the the media and all of that. Um, how do you stay positive in, in light of, you know, it's, it's been a rough couple of years, um, and we're, you know, and things are, you know, we're making some shifts and stuff. But how do you handle that and stay positive? Uh, you just you just kind of rely on the fact that, you know, uh, the work you put in um, and it's going to come um, to fruition. Like it's, you know, we are going to be successful. We are going to win. Like Coach Rule will win here. And we, we all believe that and we all know that. Um, and then, you know, going back to me personally, man, I, I put in a lot of work. I know eventually I will get this ship turned around and I, I want to be a part of that uh, because I've worked hard to be here. Um, and like, like I said, just like I said, just rely on the work you've done, rely on the hard work. Um, that's, that's pretty much. Um, and just, you know, just just realize, man, it's a, it's a blessing to be here. It's a yep. blessing to be in um you know in one of those you know, 53 chairs um i don't you know 55 whatever it, all these new whatever chairs. it is now yeah, yeah whatever it is now but you know i'd like to say 53 but um just it's just a blessing to you know be able to say you're a part of this elite community you're you're a part of you know there's not many guys that can say they play um going on seven years now um in the nfl so um just just understanding and being humble and you know understanding that you still got to work for it um but just understand that you you are in a blessed position Talk a little bit about, you know, we saw flashes of it throughout the year. At the beginning of the year, this defense was red hot, you know, going up against the Saints. Now, while they were a little bit depleted, it's still, you know, the, the, the sacks were off the charts, you know, tackles. You know, you had that pick week, what, two, I think it was, right, you know, coming right out of the gate. And then, you know, as the injuries kind of hurt, hurt the team, you know, you start to see the holes start to fill up. But how good do you think this defense can truly be? I think, you said, I think you said it yourself, man. Those first three games were amazing. And, um, you know, we still play good ball um, throughout the rest of the year. Um, but I think, you know, what Coach Snow um, talks about on his defense, he wants a fast physical defense. Like, we, you know, aren't going to take any mess. Like, you know, we are going to be the aggressor. Um, and I think you see that with, you know, those two guys that were teeing off and getting all those sacks. You know, uh, you know Burns and Hosworth, you know, <laughs> They were making plays, um, and then that was making it easier on the back end for us, um, being able to move around, um, being able to show different things. Uh, we played uh, some younger quarterbacks. I think first, you know, we played a rookie quarterback with the Jets, so just trying to, you know, mix it up for him. Um, just, you know, and I would think next week, the next week was Jameis, uh, I think, and then we played uh, Houston's quarterback. Uh, it was a young guy, uh, Davis Mills, I think. But um, just you know, having knowing that those two were were up there teeing off allowed us to play freer and be able to you know show different looks, show different things. Um, but yeah, like we we have an identity on this defense of being fast and physical, and the, the guys that he's brought in, um, the guys that he's drafted, um, the guys that will be here, you know, those are that that is the standard to be fast and physical, to run to the ball, to run and hit. And um, to go get the ball, so I think you know going into this um, to this next year, I think we got to step that up. Like we, you know, we have to get more sex. And I think from a DB standpoint, it's time that we get our hands on the ball more. Um, we we get more turnovers, um, and we start you know punching at the ball, stripping at the ball, um, and start to truly become one of these feared elite defenses um, in the NFL. So that's that's pretty much our ceiling. Is the best in the NFL. Like we. 
We don't have top five. We don't have top ten. Um, I feel like we have the capability of being the top defense. Um, if you just look um, at the people we have, um, we have guys at every position that can make um, make plays, and um, I think it's time we have to um, start living by that. And um, it's time to it's time to get that you know number one ranking. So talk a little bit about you mentioned that first game, trying to mention it, mix it up for you know the, the rookie quarterback coming over the Jets. Can, can you talk about? Uh, Shaq and and um, and Jermaine changing the jersey numbers as they were starting that game. Can you break down just what happened there in those first, that that uh, hour before the game? So uh, it was so they they already knew they were changing the jersey. We all knew they were changing the jersey, but we were wondering like why they hadn't done it during the preseason or in the, any of the preseason games. And uh, they said, "Nah, we gonna we gonna save it for the first game. We don't want them knowing who who was who." <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was, that was definitely, he was probably, he probably, as soon as he, you know, first played, he was like, who, you know, who was out here? Who was this? Um, but, um, yeah, we, we knew, um, we knew who would, um, what their numbers were going to be, uh, in preseason. You know, we on, we on the, we on the defensive field looking at four and seven. It was like, oh man, this going to be, it's going to be nice. You know, once they changed that, so that was, that was cool. Do you have any thoughts about changing your number? I know you were 11 in, in college. Yeah. So 31, do you have any thoughts about changing it up? Nah, I've been, you know, I've kind of made my mark in 31, um, kind of, you know, got my got my new deals in 31. So that, that's kind of the name I've made my, for myself, like, past five of my seven years I've been in 31 now. Uh, I think my, fir- my first year I was in 32. Um, but, yeah, 31, that's, that's me. I, you know, that's what, that's what I want. I love 31. So, you know, the past couple of years, you know, you've posted some of your career best numbers in the Carolina jersey. What are some of your personal goals for this upcoming season? Um, you know, I never, never really wanted to be a numbers guy. I never, I don't really have, a, you know, a, a, a interception count or a tackle count. Man, I just, just want to prove my worth. Man, I just want to prove um, that I, you know, that I'm, I'm a big part of this defense. Um, you know, and I want everybody else to know, like, oh man, uh, where's Justin at? Oh, I want, I want other teams to know, oh, where's, where's thirty one at? Um, and I want to, I just want to be a part of this defense and I want to be a guy that has to be counted, uh, that wants, that is counted on. Uh, I want all my teammates to be able to say 31 back there. We, we are, you know, 31 back there in the post or 31 in the box or wherever, whatever, you know, my role is at the time, man, no, we we are, we don't got to worry about him. Um, just do my one eleven, and, um, just be a guy that can be counted on, man. You know, be a guy that, you know, you want to put in your foxhole. That's, that's it. That's all I got. So another uh, fan question for you. Obviously, at the end of last season, um, you know, uh, well, Bru- Breeze had retired. Then, you know, during the offseason, you lose Matt Ryan. They go to the, he goes to the Colts. Tom Brady retires. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Tom unretires. Yeah. <laughs> so now your thoughts on um, maybe just real quick, the quarterbacks you'll be facing in there. Obviously, Tom is Tom. But now you get Marcus Mariota. Um, yeah. I guess maybe Jameis will be back. So can you talk a little bit about now facing those guys in the division? Because – Really, other than Tom, it's it's changed a little bit. So facing those yeah. other guys, it's changed a lot. I mean, uh, you see those those uh, like like a guy like Mariota comes in, and you see a, a, a new running threat. Um, you know, we have to you know have to figure out you know how to put a spy in the box, or you know, I don't, I don't know. Coach, Coach Snow is going to come up with some crazy plan to you know make 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 it work. Um, but you know, it's just a new added element to where you know Matt Ryan was trying to throw the ball. Right. Um, and now you know this guy. Maybe you know we don't know what we don't know what it's what it's going to be. Um, we know we know we're going to get in Jameis, um, a guy that's going to try to sling it around, try to you know try to just try to you know throw it wherever. You know he's going he's going to try to get get his yards, and um, we got to be got to be aware of that. And then Tom Brady, man, just a winner. You know he, he's going to do he's going to make the right play. You know he they may run the ball forty five times a game. He may throw the ball fifty times a game. Who who knows? Um, he's going to do whatever it takes to win it. He has probably 40, 40 yards passing and, you know, they win the game. He, does, he doesn't care. He doesn't really matter. So it, it's just trying to figure out what, what their game plan is. And it, that's all the way until the end of the game, really. Like, you know, he, he's a guy that's going to change up. Uh, he's going to – if something's not working, he'll, he'll figure out a way. Um, so the preparation doesn't stop, um, you know, that Saturday night when we you know, go to sleep, I guess all the way up until that end of the game to that final buzzer sounds, we're preparing and figuring out, you know, what we can do to uh, stop those guys. And it's a good group. And, you know, Mark, Marcus Mariota was a, was a first round pick, a guy that, you know, made plays Titans, 
Um, <laughs> and uh, obviously, Jameis is you know a, a guy that's you know throw for five thousand plus years. yards, and you know yeah. he, he's a good quarterback. So it, it's still tough. It's still tough, man. It's a it's a passing um it's a passing uh, division. So. Did you did you feel a special kind of feeling knowing that you know Jameis had been going off that last year and then had had his inklings you know the first couple of, but you had that first pick where everyone was like, oh no is this same old Jameis again? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that was amazing, man. Just, just any time you can get an interception in the NFL, man, it's it's like it's like wow, man. you you know you're picking off you know one of the what thirty two guys that can play that can play this position, which is a tough position, you know. I've, you know, I played quarterback in Pee Wee, and I was—they had to get me out of there. So I know, I know, I know how tough it is. Um, it's to play against, uh, you know, like a, like I say, like a defense like us that's fast, physical, and wants to get to the quarterback, uh, wants to confuse the quarterback, um, to have to sit back there and greet the defense while you got two guys or, or you know, really four or five guys coming at you. Um, that's tough. That's a, that's a tough. That's a really tough position. Um, so respect, all respect to them. But um, yeah, it, like. If I get an interception, man, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's a great, it's a great feeling. Does it still feel just as good as if you were to get it against like Sanderson High School back in the day? <laughs> I mean, so it's just a rivalry in high school, you know. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Sanderson. No disrespect to Sanderson, but they, nah, that, they, they weren't. <laughs> that was that was kind of the bottom bottom of our 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 uh, our league. So, but um, I um, I would say like a Leesville was probably like our Millbrook. Uh, those type teams were like the guys that we wanted to we wanted to beat. Those were our rivals. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely. Um, just Friday Night Lights, man. It's, it's a, that's a whole different ball game, man. You know, this is NFL is uh, is a dream come true for for everybody who gets to this level. But you understand once you get here, it's a business. Um, it's it's a situation where you either put up or shut up. Like you either you know you you know you don't you you either put up or you're gonna get left behind. Um, whereas Friday Night Lights, you're playing with all your friends, you're playing, you know, you're playing for school pride and things like that. But, um, yeah, this NFL is, is a truly, is truly a business. Yeah. Just to go back to Friday Night Lights just for a second. Um, when you get the offer from your, your hometown school, how does it feel knowing all the hard work you put in all the, you know, you know, like you said, playing with your friends, all of that's paid off to the point where now you're living your dream and getting to go to your dream university and get a chance to play in front of, you know, thousands of people. Yeah. I mean, like I said, dream come true, man. It's, it's a blessing to be able to, um, you know, strap on that Wolfpack helmet. Um, like I said, growing up, man, that's, that's all I wanted to do. Um, I didn't want to go to Carolina. I didn't want to go to Duke. I wanted to go to NC State um, and just just be able to get that offer. I, I wasn't a wasn't a big recruit. Uh, I was probably a two star, uh, if I remember correctly, didn't have didn't have a bunch of offers. Um, so I had a chip on my shoulder. And once I got there, I had to you know, I had to prove that I was worthy of the scholarship. And I remember. I remember coming in and, you know, seeing, you know, coming into camp, seeing my name on the depth chart. And I was number five, you know, fifth string coming in. And it was like, it was like, wow, like, oh, I got a lot. To, I got a lot to do. So, um, so I, I had to prove it, man. I had that, that whole, I redshirted my first year. And then I said, no, I'm not, I'm not sitting out any more games. Like I don't want to, I don't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be left when the, you know, when the bus took off and I was left back at the facility because I was red shirt and I had to work out again. That was, nah, I don't want to do that no more. I wanted to go, I wanted to play. So uh, that next year I said, nah, I'm, I'm going to start no matter what, um, no matter who's in front of me now, I got I to gotta get somebody's job. So now, uh, that's what I set out to do. Now with NC State too, you know, it's another school that really puts emphasis on recruiting within, you know, within the state. You had your freshman year, you know, Jesse Riley from Leland. You had C.J. Wilson from Lincolnton, Justin Byers from Charlotte, you know, and had guys from Raleigh too. Was that a cool kind of feeling seeing guys you had seen before? And then who are some of those guys, you know, your first few years that you kind of really felt they took you under your, their wing? Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, my first, my first year um, I started with Earl Wolf. Uh, was a you know North Carolina guy, amazing leader. Um, actually played in the NFL for a few years. Uh, unfortunately, was was hurt, but he just that was one of the, that was one of the first guys uh, to take me under under his wing. Uh, Brandon Bishop, another uh, veteran safety. Um, you know, I remember coming to them, and I, I was like, man, like this is tough. Like you know, first camp, um, you know, had just moved to corner, uh, didn't play corner in high school. It was my you know first reps at corner. I was like, uh oh. But, um, you know, just just having those guys like they knew what I could do. They 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 they've seen, um, you know, they knew that I, I could be a great player uh, one day. And then, you know, having a guys like Dante Johnson, who was a who was a veteran corner, 
uh, David Amerson, um, those guys, CJ, like you said, CJ Wilson, um, just having those guys who were older, who were veterans, um, who, who had seen, who had played a lot of football um, during that time. You know, they started as freshmen and didn't have a whole lot of success and then, you know, transitioned to now they were seniors. And um, now they were, you know, they were, the game was really slowing down for them. And um, just to see their leadership um, was amazing. So to have that, um, to come in as a, as a, as a freshman and have those guys, um, you know, take me, to, you know, take me under their wing was, was great. One, uh, one final uh, fan question for you, um, Justin, in terms of uh, Charlotte, obviously, you know, uh, college and everything growing up in, in, in Raleigh and stuff like that. Um, Twofold, what do you love about the city of Charlotte? I mean, I've been here since 99 and um, love it, but what do you love about Charlotte? And is there one favorite place you got to go to to grab some food? Okay. Uh, so, like, what do you love about Charlotte? And maybe, like, tell the fans out there a good place to maybe grab some grab some food here in Charlotte. Um, okay. Uh, I love Charlotte. love the growth. Uh, I've, been, I've been coming here. I've had family um, here since I was – Thing. I want to say I've been coming here since I was probably a sophomore in in, uh, in college, um, and didn't really understand. I, I was obviously in Raleigh, but I didn't know how you know how great Charlotte was until I was here uh, on a consistent basis, and um, I was seeing the the growth of the city, uh, how young the city was. Like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of young people moving here, and you see what uh, what South End has become. I remember when yeah. I moved here, South End was nothing. Um, you know, it was a few. Uh, warehouses and now you look how you know it's booming uh, yeah. booming now so and um so just yeah just seeing that and being able to see the different areas going down to Ballantyne, um you know plaza and, and you know dealworth and and noda um that's a i love going to noda Noda's a great spot um a lot of a lot of you know different different restaurants and storefronts and things like that just just amazing all the all the artwork and all that stuff so i, I love that um but a, a favorite favorite um restaurant i'm there's so many trust me. i mean there, they are there are there are um i'd have to say maybe like bossy bueller i love going to get a, uh, a chicken sandwich from over okay. there uh, yep. they, the bossy sauce is amazing um i think uh, uh have you ever heard of kuzo's uh, kuzo's kuzo's cuisine kuzo, yeah like that yeah i like that too so those, those are probably two of my um i don't try to have it all the time you know i, I need to eat healthy but you know those are two <laughs> Two pretty you good ones. Sport, you got a sport to play. You got a sport to play. <laughs> now, when you're going home and when you're back in Raleigh, is it DP Do's, Flying Biscuit, or is it Mojo's? So uh, I say DP Doe because I get the uh, construction zone. I, I'll put in you know, the pepperoni, I'll put the chicken um, and mozzarella. And I, what's the, I forgot the fourth one I put. I forgot the fourth one I put. But um, yeah, I, lo I love going to DP Doe. Um, trying to see what else and what else in Raleigh. just like the growth in Raleigh man you know I go like I, obviously I live in Charlotte me and my wife are here we try to get back to Raleigh as much as we can but you know a lot of time we can't but every time I go back I ride um down I ride um to downtown it's uh it's crazy the growth that's you know it's a new building new skyscraper up every every time I go uh the growth in North Hills I remember when North Hills was just the a small little mall that nobody really went to it was like a JC Penney and that was it and um, to see where it is now with um, the growth is, is, is great. So um, I love Raleigh. Uh, Raleigh will always be in my heart. Um, and, uh, you know, just see the growth of that has been amazing. So swinging things back to football and talking about the Panthers especially now, I'm sure you probably haven't had the chance, but have you met or reached out to Xavier Woods at all since no, the signing? No, we haven't met. Uh, love, to, love to meet him, love to, uh, love to sit down with him, talk with him. Um, yeah, ho hopefully we'll get that get that chance here in about twelve days uh, coming up. So yeah, can't wait to meet him. Are you excited for what that might mean? Or you know, you know, when you started and when Chin was drafted, obviously he had a much different role than he did last year. Mm -hmm. Talk about the growth you saw in him last year, and are you would, would you want him to kind of go back to that role he had his freshman year, or, or uh, you know his rookie year, or you know kind of what are you thinking? I just want I want Chin to be in the best position possible he can be. Uh, I want Xavier Woods to be in the best best position they can uh, he can be possible as, as well as myself. So whatever that means, whatever role that means, you know, I've, I've played everywhere in his defense. Chin has played everywhere in his defense. He's been a nickel. He's been a linebacker. Uh, he's been in the box. He's played deep safety. So and I've done all those things too. So um, you know, Coach Snow has a lot he can work with. Um, a lot of guys, and he, even you know everybody else is here. He has a lot of a lot of guys that are versatile and um, can do uh, many different things. So uh, we got a lot of pieces that we you know we can plug and play 
And uh, we are going to be a fast defense. You know, if that means putting seven DBs on the field, I, I won't be mad. You know, that's, that's okay. I'm okay with that now. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Not, not not trying to take any linebacks <laughs> out of the field. You know, we, we love those guys too. But, you know, we, we are, I love my DBs. So. Talk about Wilkes a little bit. You know, you mentioned the time you spent with him in Cleveland, and he obviously spent time as a defensive coordinator here. Are are the guys in for a in for a different kind of awakening? You know, come a few months from now when they when they get to going with him. Yeah, I mean he, he's a he's a fiery guy. Um, he's a he's a guy who wants to teach you how to be a man um, as well as a football player, man. And he really changed the trajectory of my career. You know, I was a guy um, coming into Cleveland who wasn't a starter. Uh, I was in my third and fourth year. Um, just I, I played. Um, I started here and there with the Jets uh, coming into Cleveland. Um, he he gave me a chance to uh, to move to safety and kind of kind of change the course of my uh, of my career. And um, you know he helped me through that. Uh, he helped me with that that, that transition and um, you know taught me a lot of lessons. And um, you know he's a, he's a great guy. He's going to do amazing things for this. Uh, not only just you know this DB group, but this defense and this team um, as a whole. So for you, you know, being a guy that's played on different teams before, what's the what's the hardest thing about changing locker rooms? You know, you get to know a lot of guys in different places. What's one of the hardest things to transition to when you go to a new team? Uh, just falling in love with a city and then now having to uproot and leave um, that city. Obviously, um, it wasn't too hard for me because I, you know, I love I love Charlotte. I've been I've been living in Charlotte. Um, you know, way before I came to the Panthers, so I'd, I would always come come back in the off season, but um, just like I said, coming from coming from Cleveland, man, I, I really got to love that city. Um, really got to know the people there. Really got to know the restaurants and and everything. Um, and really, you know, I kind of became a, a Cleveland Guardian, well, Guardians fan um, while I was there. Uh, especially living downtown, um, you know, and during spring, I would I would go to a to a game at two, three o'clock. You know, stay for seven innings, six innings. And you know, just go home. And that was just a regular day on a on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, that was just a regular day for for me. And that, that was just being able to to see the city, to um, to get out there with the people. And um, you know, you definitely fall in love with the city. So that, that's pretty tough. And um, you know, not to mention, obviously, moving from your teammates and leaving your teammates. But you know, social media has made that easier to still have those those contacts and stuff. So yeah. So I have one final question for you, and it uh, revolves around uh, Cam. There's some teams out there that still, you know, maybe need a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he is kind of out there in limbo right now. What are people missing? I mean, I, we've watched him grow, you know, and you, you've been on the opposite side of the ball. What do you see in him now? What I mean, he can still do everything he's done in the past. Yeah. And where do you see him as a player right now? I, I still think he's a guy that should have a job in this league. Uh, he will have a job in this league. Um, I, think, I think he's a guy who has earned um, – everyone's respect um especially within this organization man cam newton has done a lot for um not only carolina Panthers but charlotte as a whole and um you kind of see that when you walk into the locker room how um you know his first day there it was you know it wasn't his first day there but his first day coming back you know he's he's talking to everybody any, any everybody who um who was new to the organization he was um, saying, hey, man, I'm, I'm Cam Newton. Um, you know, he was he was going and, and talking to like like we didn't know that was. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, he was just uh, it was just infectious. The energy that he brought um, to, to practice, you know, his first practice there, he broke us down um, and he took that leadership. He took that leadership role. Um, so, yeah, that, that's just the type of guy uh, guy he is. And, you know, only known him for a short time. Um, you, he definitely rubs off on you, and it's, it's definitely infectious the way he can, uh, you know, affect the team. Talk a little bit about that first game, him coming home, and what what was the stadium like? What was it like being a part of that moment? That's you know, I, I I've been here. This is you know, going on my third year, so that was my second year. I had never heard the stadium that loud. Obviously, you know, I was the first year was COVID, so that was that was a little different story, but. That was that was an amazing atmosphere. It was it was loud. Um, that's that's who you know Cam Newton is, Charlotte, um, and everybody wanted to come and come and see that and share in that moment with him uh, coming back home. And I think that was amazing for him um, to get. Well, I think what he scored on the first drive, uh, scored a touchdown on the first drive. Man, that was 
that was probably the loudest I've ever heard that stadium um, while I've been here. And I've, I've heard a lot about, you know, the, the playoff run and, you know, how, how crazy those games were. And that's what we're trying to get it back to, to, you know, we don't want it to be that to be, you know, one game. We want that to be every week. We want opponents to come in here and, like, oh, hey, we, uh, we have to go on a silent count. Um, we don't have to communicate more. Um, we have to use hand signals. It's going to be too loud. Um, and I think, you know, I, I can only speak for, for the defense. Um, I let other people speak for the offense. But I, I think as a defense, that's what we're trying to bring back with, um, you know, getting the crowd hyped. And um, we, you know, we did a couple of things. We, we felt that when we came on the field, the stadium kind of lit up a little bit. Um, you know, at least for me, being in, being in, that, um, being in that backfield, um, kind of having the crowd, um, crowd to me. I could hear it. I could hear it once we came on the field, once we ran on the field. Um, there was an excitement. There was a joy. Um, so definitely want to bring that uh, every every week. Yeah. So a couple elephant in the room questions just to prepare you so you can either brush by them or answer as you will. Just starting off, obviously, you know, I don't know how much social media is a, is a factor for the players, the team, you know, how much y'all look at it in practices and stuff like that. But, you know, going around, there's a, a sort of discourse for Panthers fans right now, you know, kind of not really knowing – what's going on, not really trusting whatever process is happening. If you have a message for the fans, you know, what, what kind of message would that be? Uh, just, just be patient and, and know that uh, we have the right man for the job. Um, coach Rule is a, is a great coach. Um, he, is, he is a guy that has his process and we've seen his process work. We know um, we as the players, because we're, we're around him every day. We are 100% behind him. Um, and I think that's that's hard to, I guess, tell others because they can't see him every day. They only see him on Sunday and, you know, going five and 11, five and 12 obviously isn't the results that we wanted. Um, but we, you know, we as a team who have been with him every day, we are 100 percent behind him. And, you know, we are going to do everything we can to uh, create a winner here and for a long time to come. You know, this is a guy that. Um, you know, this is, you know, everybody wants to be here, you know, everybody wants to be in Carolina and make this team a winner. Um, and that's our goal. And we are, we're going to do that. You overlapped him a little bit, not too much. I don't know how much interactions you had, but there was some controversy about whether or not he was actually spoken with, you know, if they actually ever talked to Baker, did he ever say anything to you? Uh, but no, nah, I, no, nah, I haven't had too many conversations with Baker, uh, since I left. So I, no idea, no idea about any of that. I, I had I had to throw that out there. <laughs> then, uh, lastly, one more thing. You know, you obviously said you had spent a lot of time, you know, kind of with the Panthers in the back of your mind. You know, not always rooting for them, but keeping them in, you know, in, in focus. And you were a part of the team when the Browns were on the hard knock, were you know, folk featured in hard knocks. Mm -hmm. There was that season where they were doing all all or nothing. Did you watch any of that when it was going no, on? I did. I did. I, I watched the. Um... I watched a little bit of it, but I, that's the second team that I had been on hard knocks. I mean, that I had been on the team after they had uh, been on hard knocks. So I went with the Raiders for that uh, week. They were on, uh, they were on hard knocks for camp. And then the year before that, I came to the Browns midway through the year and they were on hard knocks um, before that. So I got, I got to see a little bit of what I was getting myself into um, kind of, you know, how the practice was and things like that. But um that second year, that what well, that, that year after they uh, went to hard knocks, uh, there was a there was a coaching change right before I got there, so it was totally different. You know, it was um, it, it was it was totally different. So, I asked that to kind of round it out. We mentioned it a little in the beginning, but you know, clearly that whole season that 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 season was because of the different changes that were going to happen. You know, with the Panthers organization, new owner, head coach, you know, and and players, obviously on sort of that way out that. 20 you know that that 2018 19 those off seasons were you know regime changing for the panthers but focusing specifically on that defense and how much you know how much defense had as a you know sort of the the um the reputation that the panthers defense had had at one point you think that that's something that's kind of hard to follow with the way that they were 2015 you know and beyond is that something that you think this this regime and this organization can get back to with the yeah, likes of so. Luke and, and TD and guys like that. I think so. I mean, that's I, obviously that's a, that's a tough act to follow. Um, you know, those, those two guys are two of the best linebackers to ever, to ever do it. Um, but, you know, we have the, the, you know, the sum of all the parts, we, we have a, a whole entire defense that hopefully can get to that level, you know, um, 
do we have guys that will be uh, Luke Keekley or, or Thomas Davis? I don't know. Are we, you know, that's, that's, that's tough. That's, that's hard to, that's, that's really hard to get to, to get to that level. Um, but I think we have a defense who, who wants it, who has the desire, um, who has the will to win to um, be, be um, as great as a whole. And um, that's what we're striving to do. That's what we're working every day um, to get to, to get to and be that, like I said, be that number one. Uh, ranked defense and to help this help this organization um, become a winner. Do you have anything else? Hey, just yeah, blessings, good, man. I got, I got, I got one more. <laughs> well, hold on, just blessings on the on the engagement and uh, Thank you. on good health this year. And uh, man, just uh, do your thing, man. Do your thing, Thank and you. uh, no, uh, we're, we're all rooting for you, and we uh, we greatly appreciate your time. I know Jack maybe has one more thing to follow up with. Not I got, good. I got one more because we didn't really talk about it, but <laughs> if it's not maybe a quarterback are you hoping maybe icky gets a call come come that, draft day <laughs> that would be great uh you know have another have another nc state guy here um l- allowed him to come home i think i think he's from charlotte I, i've never really, he is, yeah. uh okay, he okay. Is. yeah um so I've, I've definitely read up on him um read about him uh obviously i read up on everybody at nc state so having him here would be would be great um not you know i don't know what what's going to happen who who's coming who's going where um but if it is nc state guy that would that would be great or you could call you could call Joe Thune and tell him he's got to come this way. Hey Joe, that's my guy, man. That's a that's a good that's a good guy. You know to see that's another guy to see where he came in at. Um, you know this was a guy who was six five, maybe two twenty, two fifteen, um, coming in playing O line, and then you know that next year he played every um, position on the offensive line. Um, that year um, after we redshirted, and that's just a guy who who's a and he's a, he's a he's a lunch pail type of guy, man. He's just gonna bring his hard hat. Um, and just do whatever the team team needs. I've seen him go in the same game, go from center to, to left tackle in the same game. Um, so That's the guy we need. At, yeah, to, <laughs> see, to see where he's at now and he's making 80 plus million or whatever it is. Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good dude. That's a, that's a good blessing to have um, for, for that guy. That was the right guy to get that. Well, man, again, thank you so much for doing this for us. Um, we'll probably end up cutting it off right here or maybe a little bit after, but thank you again so much for coming on and guys, you know, everyone's rooting for rooting for J dot this year, hoping that for a healthy year <laughs> again, congratulations on the engagement. And if y'all are needing to, to rent some property, what was the name of it again? It was uh, the next stop collective. Yeah. That's a- fantastic. Anything else you want to say before, before we head out? Uh, no, I just want to say, you know, say thank you uh, Panther nation for having me, man. Just uh, I appreciate it. Um, keep pounding. That's exactly how we end all of them. We have one more that if, if you don't mind saying, you know, saying something like, uh, this is Justin Burris and you're listening to the P1N Network. This is you Justin Burris and you're li- Oh, I'm sorry. My fault. This is Justin Burris and you're listening to the P1N. P1N? This is Justin Burris and you're listening to P1N Network. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm going to end this broadcast real quick. If you don't mind, just stay in for two seconds. Yeah. Let me end this.